Today I'm going to show you how to make a cute puppy dog picture even cuter. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We're on Facebook too. We're on all of them. Just type in Flurn to the interweb and you'll probably find us. We're doing some really cool stuff today. We've got a image. This is actually a winner from last week's contest and uh, this is submitted by the Frogman. If you guys want your images edited here on Flurn.com, all you have to do is submit them in our contest. We have them every single week and we're going to be making this image quite a bit better. So let's go ahead and get into it. We got a lot to do. All right, so here's our image by Frogman, and uh, this is a picture of a corgi, which is awesome because we actually have a corgi here at the studio as well. And um, there are just a couple of things that I think maybe we can uh, work on in this image just to make it like, just bring out a little bit of the uh, color and brightness and things like that. So one of the things is uh, our shadow areas. The shadow areas here in the bottom are just a little bit too dark, so we're going to work on bringing these up in brightness a little bit. And then I really like this light. The light coming back from, you know, whatever the, you know, sunlight here on a foggy day is, is really nice. And we're just going to kind of enhance that as well. And with that, we're going to work on colors here in the foreground. And uh, we're going to sharpen um, our corgi's eyes and make them really pop out. And then we're going to add a little bit of blur to the image as well. So just kind of like general stuff today, but it, you're going to see it's going to make a big difference in the final image. All right, let's go ahead and delete that layer. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command J on the background layer that just duplicates it to a new layer and then I'm going to go to image adjustments and then down here to shadows slash highlight. This is a great place to go if you need to bring up some detail in your shadows. Okay now by default it's probably not going to have that checked on so you can click on the show more options if you want. Let's go ahead and start with all these things kind of like down there and usually I don't mess with where it says highlights. I leave that pretty much alone. I usually just use the shadow areas. So here you can kind of affect like how much brightness you'd like to put into the shadows. And it's going to look a little bit weird until you start bringing in your tonal width and then maybe you start bringing in your radius. All right. So these are some fun areas to play around. You can kind of get like more like your Harry Potter HDR effects and things like that down there. You can bring up your radius for a more realistic effect as well. So this is a great area to kind of play around with. And with this image, I'm looking for like a natural there we go. Just a little bit of natural brightening. I'm not looking for anything too crazy here. So that looks pretty good. And <laughs> you can write these numbers down if you want, but it's going to change for every, pretty much every photo. Now, if you find you want a little bit more color in your shadows, that's where your color correction comes in. And you can kind of bring that up as well. So you can see here, the shadows are kind of like a little bit desaturated. And there we go. Shadows are a little bit more saturated. So let's hit OK and see what we've got. So there's our before and the after. Basically, just bring some of that detail back out from the shadows, which is exactly what we want. All right, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to really play this up a little bit, that nice sun that's kind of coming from the background. We're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So adjustment layer, go down to curves, and then let's pump up our red channel. This is kind of, it's an orange color back there anyway, so we're going to make orange. You can do that by pumping up your red, red channel and then go to your blue channel and then pull that down a little bit. And that's going to make a nice orange. Okay. So here's our orange. Now the next thing I want to do, I just want to make sure, I don't really want this to affect my whole image. I want it to kind of be like a sunburst out from our light source here. So on my layer mask, I'm going to hit Command I, which is going to invert that layer mask. I'm going to hit G for my gradient tool. We're going to choose our, right over here, we have the foreground to transparent. That's just going to go from the foreground color to transparent. Hit OK, and then we're going to choose the radial gradient. So it's just going to be, it's going to be round instead of a linear gradient. And the foreground color we want to be white. So basically, I'm just going to be making white to transparent on this layer mask, which is going to make this nice orange color kind of stem out from there. And um, it's going to look good. Well, hopefully it's going to look good. I don't really know. But um, basically, we just want to click here in the middle and kind of drag out. There we go. And you can see here's what our layer mask looks like, right? Just pretty simple. Let's just undo that. If you make a smaller one, you can see it's really only affecting that area. That's what your layer mask looks like. You can drag it out a little bit larger, and that's what your layer mask is going to look like. So it's really up to you as far as like how much effect you really want to bring out. Um, I think that works. It looks pretty good. Now, the other thing that's kind of like a bonus here is it's bringing in this light color from the background and uh, kind of like that nice orange. But our, uh, our puppy is also this orange color too. So it's kind of like bringing out some of the natural color in the puppy as well, which I like. I think it looks pretty good. So that looks great. The next thing I want to do, we can see there's like some of this haze back here in the background. 
That's really, really cool. It gives a really nice effect, and I just kind of want to play that up even more. So I'm going to grab a new layer. Let's just grab a new layer, grab our brush tool, and I'm going to choose just a very large soft edge brush, and hold Alt or Option. You can just kind of sample colors, and you get your like color sampler wheel here. I'm going to go right to where it starts to go. I don't need to sample white. I'm going to go right over here to where it's like starting to sample a color. There we go, something like that. And Generally, when you're doing this, you want to sample the colors that are already in your image. It's just going to make it look a little bit better. And I'm going to use a really large brush and just start painting around here. There we go. And I'm at a low flow. I'm at a flow of 20%, which is just going to put on a little bit of paint there. And I can just kind of build that effect out. Okay. So that looks pretty good. The only thing we're getting here is it's, it's darkening some areas, which we don't want. This is supposed to be like a light, kind of light flare or whatever. I don't know the name for it. It just makes it look good. <laughs> um, but we don't want it to darken any areas. That's why it's kind of looking funny. So we're going to change the blending mode of this from normal down to screen. And that's going to only lighten things. It's going to make sure everything's not getting darker. So turning this off and on, you can see it's just kind of like that nice effect there. It just kind of like makes things a little bit um, brighter and gives you that whole like, you know, there's atmosphere in the air and things like that. Um, if you don't want it on an area, just use your eraser tool or a layer mask or something like that. Let's grab our layer mask here, and I'm going to paint with black on my layer mask, um, just over top of the ear real quick, just like right there. There we go. So we can still bring in some more, bring in that detail of the ear. All right, and we'll paint it back over top of there. Okay, cool. So this isn't something that obviously you don't have to do this sort of thing. It's just a style choice, but in this case, I think it kind of helps out and makes everything look pretty cool. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to play with this grass color a little bit. So let's go to a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go to our green channel and just kind of pull that up a little bit. And don't worry if you don't get the color perfect here. Um, I just kind of pulling that up right now. We're going to go back and change it in a little bit. Um, but first, I'm going to hit Command I on my layer mask and then paint with my brush tool. And I'm going to bring my flow up to about 80%. So you can hit Shift-8 to do that. And kind of just paint this into the grass. I don't need to be too incredibly precise here. Just kind of painting it in there. And then I'm going to hit X and choose a really large brush with a lower flow and then kind of paint that down. So we have a nice fading of the background color to the screen. OK, now that green is way too much. It's obnoxious and it just really doesn't look good. So then you double click right over here. And then you can go in and say, like, maybe it needs a little bit more red or whatever have you. So this is, you know, you don't want grass that looks like that, obviously. So this is where you can go in and do the fine tuning even after you've kind of, even after you've worked it in with your layer mask. So just showing the before and the after there. And that might be a little bit too much. So we'll just bring down our opacity just a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. OK, so the next thing, we're almost done here. The things I want to do, let's go ahead and sharpen up our dog's eyes. It's going to help you kind of like look directly at the dog. And then I think we're going to put some blur in this image because it would just be fun and I want to do it. All right, uh, new layers. So Shift Option Command N and then Shift Option Command E will make a stamp visible layer. And that's just kind of like a duplicate copy of everything you see. So it's on its own layer there. And that's a great way to do um, any kind of sharpening, things like that. So I'm going to hit Shift Command U to desaturate this, because when I sharpen, I don't want it to affect my colors. And we're going to change this from normal down here to overlay. So it looks re really weird now, but if I just zoom in there, well, sometimes I like to sharpen from being zoomed out, actually, because you kind of get an idea of the whole picture. So we'll go to Filter, Other, and then down here to High Pass. And the High Pass filter, this is actually what does, that's what's going to do that you're sharpening there. OK, let's just choose something. It really doesn't matter what you choose here. You can always go back and undo this. and. Try again. Um, something right where it starts to exaggerate your features, things like that. So let's hit OK. And turning this off and on, you can see there's the before and the after. But especially with this sort of thing, I don't necessarily need this visible everywhere. So I'm going to put a black layer mask on it. Hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask. And then I'm going to paint white with my paintbrush right over top of the eyes. There we go. A little bit of like whiskers here and things like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to sharpen these areas, but it's going to leave everywhere else unsharpened. There we go. So turning this off and on, you can see it might look a little bit subtle. Let's just zoom in so you can see a little bit more. There we go. It's a little bit subtle, but it's, it's enough to where you should be like, it should make the eyes stand out a little bit more in the image. You don't need to go overkill with this sort of thing. Generally, that doesn't look good anyway. 
All right, let's just lower the opacity of that grass a little bit more. And then, yeah, let's do a blur in there. So I'm going to make a new layer again, Shift Option Command N, and then Shift Option Command E for stamp visible. And then we're going to go to Filter, and I'm going to go to Blur. And this time, let's go to Tilt Shift, because I think it'll be fun. And basically, with the Tilt Shift Blur, I want to let's click here and just kind of drag this one up and drag that guy up there. And then the center, will we'll center this like right on the eyes of our subject here. And then you can kind of choose like how much of a blur you want to do. Like this is how much of a blur it's actually getting. And there we go, something like that. And then this level basically chooses like what's the, how's it going to fade away. So this area is not getting blurred at all from here to here. And then this area is like how it's fading away. And you can kind of rotate it around as well. All right, there we go. Let's rotate a little bit more around this way. Pretty cool. And we'll pull this down. Oops. We'll pull this guy down a little bit more. So it kind of gets a little bit more of a natural fade there. All right. Now let's get, let's hit OK. And I'll just turn that off and on so you can see the before and after. And it's not like a huge effect. It just, there's so much detail down in the grass that my eyes are kind of being pulled down in that direction because there's just all that like highlight shadow and things like that. So when I make this visible, it just kind of, it gives my eyes the cue like, hey, you're not necessarily supposed to look down there. Maybe you should look up here. And um, last thing I want to do, let's just grab a curve adjustment layer. I'm just going to bring this up just a little bit, hit command I on that. And then we're going to brighten it, brighten up our subject a little bit. So we're just going to paint white right over here on top of our puppy's face. So nothing crazy, just a little bit of brightness right over here just to make sure that we're looking at uh, the right part of the image. And there we go. That's awesome, awesome photo. So I'm just going to shift click all these layers and hit Command G to group them together. So we can see that it didn't take a ton of time. And here's our before and after. So there's the before. Um, still a great photo. Uh, just kind of like had the, it had it within it to be a little bit more compelling. And then the after. If you guys wanted to lower these effects, all you have to do is take either your entire group or each individual layer and lower the opacity. But I think that looks pretty good. So you can see from taking already a really, really great photo, take it to the next level in just a couple steps. And um, that's it. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you had a fun time with me hanging out today. And uh, yeah, just remember, if there are a couple, colors, a couple colors in your image, this case we focused on the orange and then on those greens, just kind of like figure out where they are, especially if they're in two different parts of the image, and kind of bring them up and have them work together a little bit more. And uh, it's just going to make everything brighter and happier and sunnier and better <laughs> and more fun. Thanks again, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Hi, guys. Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also, check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome. <laughs>